Good afternoon, Brian College Station. Welcome to the Blue Chiawa Lunch live on Sports Radio 1150 The Zone 102.7 FM. I'm your host, Ryan Broninger. We are here on the stage at the stage uh, on the stage at the tap on Harvey Road, hanging out as we do every Monday and Thursday throughout the spring semester, uh, hanging out, eating a great lunch, tap's lunch menu full of uh, delicious items and, and being updated. If I'm not giving too much away, John. So uh, they're about to go to. Uh, a little bit uh, more modern ordering system. I'm sure the front table will hate it. Um, but uh, a lot of changes about to go on with the tap menu and, and the way you do it. But still, great lunch menu, 849 Burger Basket, 849 today. Beef burrito, um, it goes with fries and a drink. And uh, don't forget, Monday nights, karaoke, Wednesday nights, uh, piano bar. And check the TAP's website, tapbcs.com, to um, check out their, their events tab and, and the concerts they've got coming through here. Always some great Texas country, up-and-coming Texas country artists uh, gracing this stage. A lot of stuff to get to today. We had some news break um, this week since our last show on Monday. Uh, Texas A&M backup quarterback Nick Starkle will be transferring, as many thought that he would. Um, there's some likely destinations from what we've heard. Uh, we'll get Luch's thoughts on that. We'll get Luch's thoughts at what the depth chart looks like at quarterback now uh, going into next season with Connor Blumrick being the only quarterback on campus other than Kellen Mond now that has taken a collegiate snap. And even Connor's only – I think he's taken five um, in his career at Texas A&M. Uh, so we'll get Lucha's thoughts on that. Got a big junior day next weekend. Uh, obviously next Thursday that will be a big topic of conversation as A&M hosts uh, some of the best players in 2020 and 2021 from across the state and across the region. And, and the more that uh, – we dive into this list that's heading into College Station. Uh, the more I believe it'll be one of, if not the biggest recruiting event of the year for Jimbo Fisher and company over at the Bright Complex. Um, for me, it, it, this is a big week, too, because tomorrow the Fighting Texas Aggie baseball team will take the field officially for the first time as a, uh, in the 2019 campaign to start their practice uh, for the season ahead. It's been really funny to me. Um, to see a lot of these preseason polls come out regarding the Aggie baseball team because in, in years past, I think I've had more questions maybe than the national writers have. I went and saw this team quite a bit in the fall and really liked what I saw, and I love the, the roster, the talent on the roster from top to bottom. It's just funny to me that now the national guys don't seem to be as high on the Aggies as the local guys do. I think this team's got a chance to be really special um, when you, especially when you consider John Doxakis and Asa Lacey uh, as Friday and Saturday starters. Uh, I, the lineup, depth, they got to find a Sunday starter, which is huge, especially in the SEC uh, when everybody's going to go about three or four deep on the mound. The, the, the good news is if you're an A&M fan, it's un, it's, it'll be unproven depth, but it's ultra-talented kids that uh, will likely fill that Sunday role and then the Tuesday role will be, again, Kind of newish names, freshmen and sophomores, but super talented. The lineup, um, I love the lineup. I love the options that Rob Childress and Justin Seeley and Will Bolt uh, will have to play with and mix and match to try to find their best nine. Um, there's some spots open in the outfield. Obviously, you return Braden Shoemake. Braden Shoemake was left off the perfect game all preseason All-American list, which shocked me. Um, and he was named third team by one of the other publications. So, even Shoemake, who... You know, by his accounts, probably had a down year last year, uh, but still hit, I think, 315 or 312 uh, and led the team in uh, just about every offensive category except for um, – or was second in the team behind Michael Hellman. Uh, so by his standard, probably a down year, but by most people it's, a, and it's an outstanding year, and I think he's got a chance to um, play his way in the top – two or three rounds of the MLB draft after this year. I don't think it's any question that this will be the last season that we see Braden Shoemake play baseball for the Texas Aggies. But, again, just around Shoemake, you return uh, Logan Foster, Hunter Coleman, Will Frizzell, guys that have got quality experience at bats that have put up big numbers in big games. And um, if these kids continue to grow, uh, th to me, this should be the most talented team that A&M has had since 2016, that team with – Michael Barish and Nick Banks and J.B. Moss and Hunter Melton and uh, all those guys, if they can find the, the pitching depth, especially out of the bullpen, if they're able to pull that together and find some pitching depth, I think this A&M team can really make some noise in the SEC. Again, it's very similar, though, to, to football and, and basketball, especially in this conference, in that 
every week that you better be able to get a guy on the mound to compete. There better be somebody that is willing to or that, that is capable of shutting down an offense on any given day because you don't want to run through a season and Sunday be a question every week. Um, because everybody in this conference is good, and everybody in this conference has got uh, elite depth in starting pitching. So, again, Aggie baseball starting tomorrow, uh, preseason practice. First game, I believe, is February. Front table, y'all got the date on that? First, February 15th against Fordham, right? Fordham comes to town uh, from the northeast to, to start the, the first series at Olsen Field at Bluebell Park. One of my favorite days of the year, opening day uh, for Aggie baseball.